I'm Phil LaGreco. If there's two things I love doing most, it's eating and boxing. Join me as I travel the world talking to world-class boxers, promoters, and trainers, and what's it like to be at the top of their game. So Lou, let's get into it. Broccolinis, why are we here? First of all, you're an Italian, so you'll know this. The food in here is great. It's a little place this summer, the garage opens, the door opens, it's wide open to the public. They got taps of beer, Italian beers, great wine, great food, great little menu, and it's like, they call this my office. Like when I'm, when I'm doing a show at the Barclays Center, Broccolini is like my office. Ludibella is a part of the family, so he can come here, he can cook, he can you know, check also the business because he cares about us and we care about him a lot. When I was growing up, like my family, we were Italian, so Italian-American, and, and, and my grandparents were still alive when they lived until their 90s, and, and my, grand, my, my parents were first generation, my mom spoke Italian. Non parlo bene. Ah, non è male, non male. No, 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 non, non parlo bene. Uh, capisco. Uh, Un pochettino. Uh, yeah, ma, ma non parlo bene. I grew up in Brooklyn. When I was in high school and college and stuff, two o'clock in the morning, I'd be heading to Chinatown, or or or, or seeing if I could catch um, Umberto's clam bar open in Little Italy, you know, or or a really good pizzeria. And I remember eating in my, you know, my grandmother's, uh, one of my grandparents had a finished basement, and every Sunday they would do it. The other Sunday, my, my dad's parents would do the big Sunday gravy with everything in the gravy in the middle of the afternoon. The whole family would get together, eat, drink, wine, hang out, you know. We, we, the Sunday meal, the Sunday sauce was a big deal when I was a kid. But we didn't go to like Italian restaurants a lot, so we went to other kind of restaurants. So now I go to Italian restaurants where I feel connected to the people, to the food. It feels like home. This little place feels like home. You are the most vocal and proudest promoters in the game. How important is it for, to put your fighter before you? You know, you got to remember that, like, as a promoter, I promote more than 50 fighters. But the one thing I always try to remember, because it's, it, it's the key, is every fighter is his own situation, his own career. That, you know, you can't, you, you have to look at each individual for what they are, for their own life, their own potential, where they can go, how, how far they can go in this game, what this game can do for them. I, I personally don't like to, to work with guys when they hit the point that they're more like professional opponents because a professional opponent can't make a good living. Of course. It's not worth and getting beaten. it's not healthy either. It's not healthy, it's not worth getting beaten up. Um, it, I think for the most part, I, I, I generally have put my fighters before. My fighters make more money than, than I do. I, I don't have fights where I make, I'm, I'm taking more money from what's available than the fighter is getting paid. Um, I'm not saying I'm a perfect guy. There are no choir boys uh, in, in, in boxing, but, um, but, but, but I, I, I maintain a certain set of standards and rules for myself in the business that I'm comfortable with. And I'm proud of my company and how we conduct our business. I think we're fair to fighters. I think that's why so many fighters stay with us and a lot of fighters actually, even if they leave at they some point, they want to come back. The digital era has exploded. Is it fair or how do you feel the fact that fans are stealing live streams? Does it hurt your pocket as a promoter? Um, it, if you're doing pay-per-view and they're stealing a live stream, it could hurt your pocket. If they're taking live streams of stuff that's on free TV or, you know, if premium cable, they're hurting the premium cable company, it's not right. Um, if they're taking streams that are on free TV elsewhere in the world and pulling those down, um, not really hurting anybody. But is there uh, a way to I, I, Personally, I'm streaming my smaller shows, and it's a very high-quality stream, and I want as many people around the world to to tune in so and is that see. a way to compromise to the fans of saying, okay, you guys love, wanna sh you know, love me streaming fights? Is there a way to compromise I mean, stealing that? is stealing, man. And people, if a product is for sale, you buy it, and if you don't want to buy it, you don't steal it. That being said, I don't think streaming is going to ever replace regular TV, at least not soon. But now people are much more used to watching content and programming on their computer, on their cell phone, etc. So streaming is an important way of delivery. So now, 
promoters and, and people in the business are monetizing the streaming, charging for a stream. Right. You know. That being said, sometimes, like my Broadway boxing series, I'll put up a free stream because I want the public to see my Your fights product. live and my fighters and my product. Of course. So I think streaming is an important part of the future of boxing. No, bro, you fucking figured like after 10 episodes, I'm done with pizza. I'm fucking always back at it. Back at it. Wow.